Doug, how many types of cancer are there? Over 200, 200 plus. I don't know exactly, but I know it's over 200. And how does the Canadian Cancer Society choose which, which cancer uh, the money is funneled into? It's a fantastic question. We, we actually, as I mentioned before, we, we support research in all 200 plus, plus types of cancer. We don't discriminate. We are the only cancer charity that does that. We, uh, we fund research and programs in all 200 plus types of cancer. And we pick the research programs based on their merit. Uh, so they go through a rigorous, rigorous program application process before they're granted the money. And then we get busy and raise the money for those grants. If, if somebody um, has developed cancer and, and wants some support, what can the Canadian Cancer Society do? One of the services that we offer is our information service, and you can call a 188 number that, again, you can call our office to get. And uh, that number is on all of our marketing material, our business cards, our daffodil pin boxes. You can go to cancer.ca and get that number. Uh, basically, you call that number and you can have any cancer question answered in a hundred different languages for free. So if you're a caregiver, if you're someone who's going through a cancer journey yourself, or you know someone who's going through cancer, or has any cancer question, they can have that question answered by calling that 188 number. We also offer peer support. So again, anyone who's going through their own personal cancer journey, or they're a caregiver of someone going through a cancer journey, can be matched with a buddy. So they have someone who's gone through the exact same situation and they can talk to them as they're going through it and get supported, have support and, and just have that, uh, that sort of phone a friend in their back pocket that they can, they can have someone to support them. Um, and we've found that that's instrumental in the, in the well-being and the treatment uh, process for, for people to sort of come out the other end w with a, a great frame of mind. Because part, part, uh, part of the cancer journey is, is, and the cancer success is being in a positive frame of mind. And if you have questions and if you have concerns, then having those answered takes off a load of stress. Can you give me the statistics for people who are now living with cancer and what the cancer rate looks like. Absolutely. Uh, the, the cancer landscape in Canada, uh, currently, the stats tell us that two in five Canadians will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their lifetime. In 2015, over 196,000 people were diagnosed, Canadians were diagnosed with cancer, and over 76,000 people lost their battle. Currently in Canada, 810,000 are living with the disease. So again, our, our mission is to eradicate cancer and make the lives of people living with cancer more comfortable. Let's um, talk a little bit about prevention and advocacy. Um, when, when we look at cancer, we're always focused on trying to prevent it. But how do we uh, advocate, how does the Canadian Cancer Society advocate for people with cancer? Well, number one, we're busy lobbying on their behalf. Um, we're lobbying for prevention measures, we're lobbying for treatment measures. Um, in the past, uh, some of our successes have been changing, having the laws changed for uh, tanning for people under age, the age of 18. We've had uh, just recently some successes with uh, Bill 45, the Healthier Choices Act. And a shout out to so Sophie Koala, who was instrumental in getting that passed um, last summer. And that bill will make it more difficult for people to get access to tobacco. So a ban on the sale of menthol and flavored tobacco, a ban on the sale of uh, chewing tobacco, flavored chewing tobacco, as well as putting in putting regulations in place for the use of e-cigarettes. So again, we're lobbying for the changes of laws that will make us healthier and prevent cancer in the long run. Some of our some of the programs that we're working on currently are 
changes to the, to the laws with regards to HPV vaccination for boys. Currently, if you're a 13-year-old girl in Canada, you will, you will get that HPV vaccination at your public school free of charge. If you're a 13-year-old boy in Ontario, sorry, in Ontario, then you will get, uh, you would go to your GP and request the, the vaccination at a cost of about $400 per vaccination. So we're trying to get the Ontario government to change those laws. So that, that vaccination at age 13 will happen for boys and girls. It's been proven that cancer, you know, from the HPV vaccination, from the HPV virus, is as prevalent in boys as in girls. So it's important that we include boys. Uh, currently, there are four other provinces that have it. Um, Ontario is not one of them. The other focus that we have is coverage for take-home cancer drugs. And this is a huge one. Um, so we're lobbying the Ontario government to, to have at-home cancer drugs be funded, just like they would be if they were administered at the hospital. So again, the difference is if they're administered at the hospital, they're covered. If they're not, they're covered. They, and, and you don't have coverage through a drug plan at work, then you would pay for those drugs that are administered at, at home. And the statistics tell us that 46% of new treatments are going to be able to be administered at home. So it's, it's a growing problem. And we just feel that um, you know, those people that are administering the drugs and the, the treatments at home shouldn't be discriminated against. We're working hard to change those rules, change those laws. How old is the Canadian Cancer Society? We were born in 1938. And back then, in 1938, the cancer survival rate was 25%. So 25% of people uh, survived a cancer diagnosis. And we are proud to say uh, that over the last 76 odd years, that that survival rate has increased over 62%, close to 63%. They're phenom that's a phenomenal difference, and that's basically what research does. Um, that's the difference that research has made over the last 76 years. And in certain cancers, breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, uh, the childhood cancer, the survival rate is, is around 90%, 88 to 92%. And uh, that's just phenomenal. You know, our goal, our mission from the Canadian Cancer Society perspective is to, you know, make a world that, uh, that uh, no one fears can no Canadian fears cancer. You know, we and that's happening. That we, we are seeing the movement. Uh, and again, that's what your cancer dollars do. Well positioned cancer dollars will uh, help increase those numbers. Doug, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today and uh, best of luck with the busy events coming up, all for cancer research. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. On behalf of the 810,000 Canadians living with cancer, it's our pleasure to pin a daffodil on you, Mayor Patterson, uh, for the Canadian Cancer Society's Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you so much for t participating. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks very much, Doug. This is, uh, it's great to be pinned. And certainly when I think about all of the individuals in our community uh, that are facing battles uh, with cancer, it's uh, great to be able to show that support and uh, get the word out that we, uh, we need to, to raise funds and do everything that we can to, uh, to come alongside those, uh, those that are in that battle, because we're all in this together. Absolutely, thank you so much, we appreciate it. Okay. I actually have a very close family member right now that uh, is in a cancer battle, and uh, you realize very quickly just how you really need that support system around them, that really it's not a, not a battle you want to go through alone, uh, that really it, you need to bring together friends and family, uh, everyone all together, and then you just have that hope and you, you work together, you see the challenges, you see the ups and the downs, but you really see how this is such an important cause for our community.
I know that uh, that uh, Cancer Awareness Month, there's always lots of great things going on, and so it's it's great to see all of that activity and, and our community really coming together as one for such an important cause. And so certainly as mayor, I, I encourage everyone to, to get involved, uh, to make donations, because this is exactly the sort of cause that uh, that's so important to so many people in our city.